WD7R is uh, taking check-ins, uh, uh, late check-ins for the swap meet portion, but uh, uh, on-time check-ins for the round table. Uh, go ahead. Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper, hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to continue our series on no random contacts, and that's where we talk about the who, what, where, why, and how of using radio for the purpose of establishing targeted communication with known quantities. That's right, radio with a purpose. And I'm gonna treat this episode a little bit differently. Uh, typically I will show the exercise and then have an after action report. I'm going to interleave commentary throughout this exercise because there are a lot of nuggets, especially for you guys that are uh, new or outsiders to radio. So let's start with the mission objective. My goal is to explore a mode of communication uh, that is typically not used on VHF or in this case two meters and that is going to be single sideband. Typically, most of the uh, traffic you'll see on VHF is FM, but uh, single sideband offers a few benefits over FM, mostly in the ability for my signal to go further, for me to use less power, and I prefer it for a lot of the work I do, this in, this, do in this area. Uh, in terms of our known quantity, uh, I want to be able to target my communication at a net that takes place every uh, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. local time and uh, try to establish a contact with at least one person in that group, probably net control. So uh, stick around because I also wanna talk a little bit about community and then the value of radio as a uh, resource for information, but more than anything, community. Okay, before we get going, let's go ahead and apply a broad definition to what a net is. And a net is just a, a scheduled event that takes place on a particular day of week time and typically has some agenda and there's a frequency and mode that people will agree upon. In our case, uh, we have a net that takes place on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. local time on 144.250 upper sideband. So those are all of the details of knowing where to go and when. Uh, the purpose of the net in our case is just to have an informal roundtable conversation with the local community. Now, every net's formats are different. I like this one because it is uh, an informal net. It is a directed net, which means all of your traffic goes through a single net control operator, and then every um, person within the, that's participating within the net gets a turn to participate. Uh, WD7R, the net control operator here, does a fantastic job of running this net. And there are really three components in terms of the format. There is the check-in portion, there's the discussion portion, and then the 73 round, which is the close, and that's basically it. So let's go ahead and start with the check-ins. So in this particular clip, a net control operator essentially asks for active check-ins, and the protocol is for you to throw out your call sign and wait to be acknowledged. Uh, WD7R, taking additional check-ins. KT1, are you in? Pretty good. I'll uh, stand by and wait for my turn. I'm still off about uh, 150 hertz on this new 857 that I picked up at the Hamfest. Hoping you guys can help me out on how to resolve that issue. Um, I'll pass the baton on for now. Uh, WD7R from KT1 RUN. So after you check in, net control will take additional check-ins. The process usually takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Now, before we continue on this exercise, I wanna talk a little bit about my station capabilities and what I'm using to participate. So I'm using a two meter rig that is capable of doing single sideband. Like I said, most FM radios like your Baofeng HTs are FM only and this will not work. So this is why I lean towards the all band, all mode rigs like the Yaesu FT817, 818, 857, and my new to me rig, the 897. And it gives me the ability to basically work anywhere from HF all the way up to UHF on every single mode, FM, AM, CW, upper sideband, lower sideband, and digital. Now, since this group is kind of spread uh, over about, a, let's say, a 200-mile radius, uh, I need to be able to effectively have an antenna that allows me to communicate with people at various locations. So a lot of guys use a directional antenna or beam for the purpose of participating in SSB uh, two-meter nets. 
My setup is extremely modest. I am the Bubba radio operator in the group. Uh, most of the guys have rotators and fancy software. I don't have any of that. So really, I have a $40 painter's pole that goes up about 16 feet. I have a $90 Aero 2 Yegi, and I have that one configured uh, to run horizontally. Uh, single sideband, the convention is to run your antennas horizontal instead of vertical like you find with FM. And then I have written some custom software that allows me to point or orient my beam at the bearing of the station that I want to talk to or here. Uh, like I said, everybody else in the group is using uh, fancy rotators that automatically will move the beam. They are using fancy software like, uh, I think it's Ham Radio Deluxe, where they enter in a call sign, and it gives them the bearing. I have written something very uh, modest called MCOM Tools, and one of the things that allows you to do is do FCC call sign lookups offline. I go outside, well actually I look them up first, enter their call sign, I get a bearing, go outside, get my compass, and literally just rotate the painter's pole and that's it. Actually, let's take a look at me doing that. Um, I'll make the point that uh, I was not able to really get a good clip of audio on this one because uh, the gentleman uh, in this clip really did not uh, talk for very long. So by the time I looked him up and oriented my beam, uh, he was basically done. So there's only a few seconds here at the end. Barely hear this guy. November 7, THW. Oh, wow. He is out there. He's out in Sholo, guys. Um, 117 miles. Let me go rotate the beam a little bit. All right, so that last uh, clip, well, while very short and not a very good demo, I'm sorry for that, uh, brings up a good point, and this is this idea of relays. So let's say that there is a station that is too far for net control or maybe myself to hear. Uh, there's this idea of someone acting as a relay, and this is another radio operator that can hear you and the other party and will basically act as a proxy to send traffic. So in this particular clip, uh, WD7R net control was unable to hear a particular station. I could not hear that station either, uh, but Doug down in Tucson, uh, K7EME was able to hear it and relay the traffic. So it's a very effective technique to have in your tool bag uh, if you're able to have a network of operators that are capable of acting as transmission proxies. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a quick look of what it looks like to relay some traffic. All right, so next up, I want to talk about my particular turn in this round table. Uh, like I said, we had gone through the check-in process. A few people uh, were handed the baton to talk, and then Net Control finally said, okay, uh, let's go ahead and see if Gaston, KT1RUN, um, is ready to talk about whatever he wants. And this is really an open discussion that you drive, and you'll have either a dialogue directly with Net Control, or you can open it up to talk to uh, anybody else participating in the net. Uh, in my case, uh, what I typically like to talk about are the projects I'm working on and if I need assistance. And that is a big takeaway with the purpose uh, of radio. So in my mind, in a grid down scenario where you don't have access to the internet, sometimes you may need to look up something you know nothing about. In this particular scenario, my radio is off by about 150 hertz. That radio is new to me. And let's say that I could not go online and download the manual. Well, nets like this or 
basically having a community of radio operators, now you have a support network of people with lots of different skill sets that could actually help you in the absence of not being able to access certain information. So basically I told them, hey, I'm running this 897, I'm off frequency. Later on, they gave me some tips on how to tune it and get back on frequency. Um, but that's really the point I wanna make in terms of radio with purpose. I see nets like this and establishing community and networks as great ways to have a support network during some grid down scenarios, whether it's a natural disaster or full on SHTF scenario. Hey, uh, next on the list is uh, Gaston, Kilo Tango 1, uh, Romeo, Uniform, November, KT1RUN. Uh, great to finally meet you in person and uh, uh, what's going on this week, Gaston? Yeah, it was great to meet you as well, Mike. Uh, not a whole lot's going on. I've been uh, mostly focused on uh, trying to figure out this new uh, 897. It's pretty similar to my 857 and 818, uh, just a bit larger. Uh, been doing quite a bit of programming. Uh, that's why I haven't been at the roundtable for at least eight months now. And uh, that's coming along, and I plan to have a beta release in January. And I uh, hope to share that with, uh, with the group. All right, folks, so I said that there was a 73 round as part of the format. That is basically just a close where everybody just gives their final thoughts. It goes around the table again. Um, I didn't participate for that, but uh, what I wanna really talk about in closing here are some themes. And theme number one is the value of maybe looking at a single sideband on two meters, even on 440 megahertz on UHF as another tool to add to your toolkit. Personally, I have had a lot of success in having uh, more distant communication using single sideband over FM. Uh, the gentleman, Doug, that came up a few times, uh, he's down in Tucson and he's 120-ish miles from my location and I have made contacts with him from my home using the same equipment. I have even done it in the field using the Pactana truck mount, which just weighs ounces, only running five watts. So. I have a lot of success running much lower power, so saving on resource utilization and consumption, and being able to go much further dis distances than I am with FM. Uh, so that's the first major theme. The second one, and I'm gonna talk about it as much as I can, because I think it's the most important reason to get into radio, and that's this idea of building community and establishing relationships. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but one of the biggest reasons I can think of of being licensed is the ability to train now, practice and start to get folded into some of these communities when times are good. Uh, there is a wealth of information. The collective is stronger than the individual. So the ability to attend a net as often as you can, in my case, I could attend this net uh, once a week, is a great way of connecting with like-minded individuals and having a support network where you can provide stuff you know and you can get uh, you know, the skill set of that broader group coming your way. The last thing I want to talk about is I am extremely blessed to have been born in 1981 and grew up in a pre-internet era. So if you're under 40, uh, you know, I grew up uh, basically learning to drive with a Thomas guide. And these were like paper spiral bound maps that had grids and I had one for each county. So I had to look up and know my route that I was going to take everywhere I went. I wish I could find a Thomas guide today uh, for this area. Grew up with payphones, uh, grew up with landlines. Uh, the internet was not around to look up shits. So we had to go to the library and look stuff up. You had to talk to people that were more senior and had more information. So in a scenario where we don't have access to internet, I find that groups like this are going to be very valuable stores of information. And if you train now and know what's available in your area now, you already know what to do if you're unable to, you know, uh, get online and look up whatever. We have been spoiled, and I'm not gonna go into rant here, but the point is I see value in radio in terms of community and being able to have access to information from a group of operators. Um, with that said, guys, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next video. I may talk about why I select or lean towards certain radios, like that FT897 I picked up uh, last week at a ham fest. And I'll talk about probably the features that I look for. Again, this is mostly geared towards either portable operators or people that um, 
are looking for ruggedized features. That's where I tend to go. So anyways, I'm rambling here. I wanna thank everybody who is supporting me. I'm getting one step closer to doing this full time. And uh, yeah, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Fuck, I'm out of coffee.